In the land of enchantment, New Mexico's signature farm commodity casts a spell on the taste buds, sparking a fiery debate. So the big question, red or green? Green. Red. <laughs> Chili peppers, green or red, have enriched the southwestern palate for longer than apple pie has been American. We let it tumble in there and the skin just comes right off. Green chilies make everything better. Oh yeah, we eat them on everything. Every year, tourists flock to the small town of Hatch, New Mexico, the self-proclaimed green chili capital of the world, to celebrate and devour a fresh harvest. I just love this place. I'll probably be back next year to buy more chili so I can have it all year long. More lucrative green, New Mexico chilies turn red the longer they stay on the vine offering a different taste profile and dried powder. The crop is entwined with local identity. Hanging ristras are symbols of health and good luck. And New Mexico has enjoyed good fortune as the national leader in chili pepper production, though fault lines may be appearing. If you look at the production in the United States in 2016, California accounted for about two thirds of that production and New Mexico accounted for slightly under a third. Dr. Jay Lillywhite is an agricultural economist with New Mexico State University, where hybrid research done over a century ago gave birth to today's robust strains. And on campus in Las Cruces, the Chili Pepper Institute continues to educate and promote an industry he claims is worth over $400 million annually. Lillywhite adds that although New Mexican chili production has dropped from 35,000 acres in the early 1990s down to around 8,000 today, the state's processing infrastructure still beats out domestic competition. But pressure from other states and Mexico have some digging deeper as a buffer against disruption. There's only so much chili that can be grown in the Hatch region or only so much chili that can be grown in New Mexico. And as that demand continues to increase, if you can actually build a marketing campaign around that, there will obviously be premiums. Hatch Valley growers have adopted a distinct branding strategy to distinguish their product from a host of others. Adjacent to the Rio Grande, the region has long been hailed for its unique blend of favorable soil and climate conditions. The Hatch Valley here in southern New Mexico has become synonymous with uh, high quality green chili. Grower Preston Mitchell says his yields average 20 to 30 tons per acre, with prices ranging from $500 to over $600 per ton for green varieties. You can hear that nice crisp pop as it pops open. Tear that pot open and you'll see just a thin little yellow strip running up that vein and that's the capsaicin in the pot that you taste as heat. Labor costs can bite into profits because harvest is done by hand. Mitchell says finding workers is a challenge in itself. Mechanization, long rumored, remains elusive. And drought, all too abundant. 95% of the water that fills up Elephant Butte comes from snowpack runoff. And we just haven't had it in, in, since 2003 on a regular basis. We may have one good year, maybe two, and then it, nothing. Elephant Butte Irrigation District covers over 90,000 acres of irrigable land in southern New Mexico. Manager Gary Esslinger says low levels in reservoirs on the Rio Grande north of Hatch forced ratepayer allotments down from an average three acre feet to just 10 inches in 2018. But a complicated set of decades old agreements also legally require the utility to satisfy surface water deliveries downstream first to Texas and Mexico. Certainly we have to abide by the law and yet try our best to supply the water that's necessary to these farms. It's a constant battle. Uh, and the litigation is always flowing here. It, it never stops. EBID has been at the center of legal wrangling between the federal government, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas for over a decade in regards to water rights under the Rio Grande Compact Agreement. The case is expected to go before the U.S. Supreme Court next year. And it's a gamble for New Mexico, says Esslinger, adding that new stakeholders, ushered in by recent population booms, are unfamiliar and unwilling to compromise with water laws drawn up over 80 years ago. It's the public at large that really doesn't understand the complexity of how we have to operate down here 
it's real easy for me to explain to a farmer what's going on because of the drought because most of these farmers have been here three and four generations, some of them even five. My great-great-grandfather is actually credited with being the first chili farmer in the Hatch Valley. His name was Giuseppe Franzo and he was an immigrant from Austria. Preston Mitchell's operation pumped a majority of groundwater to irrigate crops during the past season. But over time, only salty brackish water is left in uncharged aquifers, making an infusion of fresh Rio Grande River water essential. The drought is a major concern to growers in this area. Mitchell has had to grow his business to remain profitable. Expanding acres, processing, and roasting chilies have all become a part of the mix. As word spreads and orders for Hatch Valley green chilies come in from across the globe, Mitchell reiterates regional branding is a vital ingredient for future growth. Hatch chili is sought for by buyers at grocery stores such that they will not take chili from elsewhere. So it, it kind of allows us to have this little niche within the overall green chili market and uh, continue to farm and continue to be able to farm profitably. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.